Hello everyone and welcome to the Springfield Estate Tasting. My name is Jenna Brevet and I'm so happy that you are joining us with our tasting today. So in South Africa our lockdown regulations are pretty strict in that they have completely banned the sale of any alcohol and tobacco products. We are very fortunate that we have a whole cellar full of wine so I still have some, some supplies and I'm very glad that you could buy some to enjoy with us in this, in this tasting. So thank you for the support and I hope you enjoy the three wines and the pairings that we have suggested. I don't have any snacks with me today because I haven't actually left the farm in about six weeks so I'm pretty much down to rice, flour and the things in my freezer. But I hope that if you did get the pairing suggestions I, I suggested that, um, that they go very well and that, that you enjoy your, your food and wine pairing. Springfield is my family's farm and it's been in our family since 1898. By being in the same area for so long, we've really learned a lot over the generations. Everything we know is passed down from generation to generation. Um, we know what works well in certain areas, what cultivars work well in certain soils, which areas are prone to spring frost, which can be quite devastating in terms of our crop for the year going forwards. And yeah, everything we know is just because of the people that were here before us. So our first wine for today is Life From Stone. Life From Stone is a 100% Sauvignon Blanc that's grown in really, really rocky soil. It's grown in about 70% quartz rock and as a result of that your vine really has to work super hard to get water, to get nutrients and as a result makes really small bunches of grapes that have smaller berries and are very, very concentrated in flavour. Essentially you'll find that um, the good drainage of the rocky soil means that a lot of the water drains off and it just means that your grapes are less diluted. So all your flavour compounds, your sugars, your aromatics, everything in the grape is just more concentrated. And um, we really try and harness that in our winemaking um, to make the most expressive and punchy beautiful glass of Sauvignon Blanc that, that we possibly can make. So one of the ways we do that is by harvesting everything on our farm at night time. In Robertson it can get quite hot during the day so it can get up to uh, 35, 37, 40 degrees during, during summertime in the middle of the day. But the nice thing is that we have quite a big diurnal temperature range in, in our area. So at night the temperatures drop to around 12, 13 degrees Celsius and that's when we harvest the, the grapes to make sure that they stay crisp, that they stay cold and that all those volatile flavours and aromatics don't oxidise um, in the heat of, of the day. You also get much crisper flavours if you pick in the middle of the day, sure, you know, it's very romantic to, to pick by hand and to, to do everything hand selected but the problem is that it takes about two hours then to get one trailer full of grapes into the cellar and half of the stuff at the bottom of the trailer would have started fermenting in the heat of the day if, if we did that. So we pick at night time using harvesting machines. The grapes are in the cellar within 10 minutes of being picked. This year was also the first year that we started using dry ice. Um, during our harvesting to even more insulate and protect the grapes from oxidization. So we try and get them into the cellar as quickly as possible without um, you know, destroying too, too much of, of the flavor. So that's our reason for, for using harvesting machines. Um, once the juice gets into the cellar, we only use free run juice here at Springfield. So nothing is crushed, nothing is pressed. It's just the juice that naturally comes out of the grapes that comes out of the gravity fed tanks so it's just free run juice and then once again we <laughs> choose the hard way in that we um, don't settle using any enzymes we settle using only time and temperature so that would mean that we chill the tanks down to minus three degrees celsius for anything from six weeks to six months during this time all the sediment and everything will settle to the bottom of the tank and you end up with this beautiful crystal clear juice at the top, grape juice. Um, this is what we use, use to ferment um, for the Springfield wines. Uh, we wouldn't waste the bits at the bottom, the sediment, that will be filtered out and go into bulk production. But essentially we only use wine that has been settled using time and temperature. We found that the longer we leave it on the fresh leaves, on the sediment, the more texture you get, the more, you know, 
complex flavors you get, um, the more body you get in the wine. So it, it's quite a beneficial decision for us as well. So in the glass, sorry, I've had a few sips because this is nerve wracking. Um, in the glass, it will be really, really expressive on the nose. I think that's the most standout feature of the Life from Stone is that it's just so, it jumps out of the glass. It's so expressive. It's, it's, it's so aromatic um, because we use all these steps to try and protect the flavor and not let it evaporate or oxidize. So you'll get lots of passion fruit, grapefruit. Um, I know it's not a very done thing to use guava as a tasting note. Uh, I don't think you get fresh guavas that much in the UK, but in South Africa we have beautiful guava trees like in my garden and that fresh um, guava smell is quite intoxicating. Um, it's nothing like guava nectar that you'll buy in a shop. So should probably not use that as a tasting note, but if you've ever had fresh guava, you'll know what I'm talking about. Lots of passion fruit though, that granadella tropical with that, you know, that, that it's the same with what you get in pineapple as well. It's like sweet but sour at the same time. That like tropical granadella freshness. And the nice thing about life in stone is because of the rocky soil, you get a bit of minerality that comes through as well. So it will be more um, of a flintiness or a smokiness at the end of the nose and of the palate as well. Once you once you taste it, uh, it almost has a salinity on the finish, um, like a saltiness. It's as if you were eating oysters on the beach and you've just rinsed your glass in seawater before filling it up again. Just a touch of saltiness, which makes it a really good savory wine. It means that you can enjoy it glass after glass, bottle after bottle, without your palate tiring of it, which is often the case with um, highly aromatic wines that just after a while or if it gets warm, you get a bit over it. So thankfully, that never happens with Life in Stone. So classic pairing for this would be goat's cheese. Um, I mean, you, you get the Cotin de Chavignol that's grown in, in Sancerre, uh, which is, you know, our greatest Sauvignon Blanc that we could compare ourselves to or aspire to be. Um, and the, it's just a match made in heaven. That creaminess of the goat's cheese really, really works with the, with the Sauvignon. The acidity just cuts through that excessive creaminess. And then there's just also that savory, musky element of, of it as well that, that just really works pretty well. So great for you guys going into springtime into summer for those like beautiful fresh salads with like a crostini and ghost cheese uh, combo like fresh peas broad beans all those summer things together will work super well um, for me life from stone really is summer in a glass it's also the wine that reminds me the most of home you can have a glass here you can have a glass in Timbuktu and it will just take you straight back to to being in South Africa and to being on Springfield um, so I know a lot of us are probably not going to be traveling very soon. Uh, you might have planned to come visit us, I hope, and now you can't. So just have a glass of life from Stone and it will take you back to, to any time that you were in South Africa or yeah, that, that you were here. It reminds me of home. Cool, so our next wine um, that we are tasting is the Miss Lucy. So I think this is still dark from stone. Let me just, there we go, that worked. Um, Miss Lucy is our tribute to the ocean. Um, Springfield's my family's farm. My father, Aubrey, is the winemaker. And my aunt Jeanette is, uh, works with marketing and sales. The two of us are more in, on that side of things together. I did try and make um, a rosé once. It came out with 17% alcohol, so I will leave the winemaking to my father and to my other siblings, because not for me. But yeah, so 
although my father is the winemaker, he does consider himself a fisherman first. Uh, our whole fa family loves the ocean, loves the sea. Um, I think that's been one of the biggest challenges of lockdown is that actually he couldn't go away for a weekend to go fishing. Um, it's been six weeks and yeah, the cracks are starting to show. So he, he loves the ocean. Our whole family has like a true affinity with the ocean and, and with being by the seaside. And um, we decided to make a wine as a tribute to the ocean and to the bounty it has to offer to remind you of those perfect summer holidays where you know, you've got a sunburnt nose, there's sand everywhere, there's fish scales everywhere, and you just had the best time. Lunches turn into afternoon drinks, turn into dinners, turn into you know, raucous evenings. It's um, every single nostalgic sepia tinted memory you could ever have, we are trying to capture in a bottle. So that's the, the idea for Miss Lucy. Um, you might wonder who is Miss Lucy? It's not a family member or a beloved pet. It's actually a local nickname for the red stump nose, which is the fish on the label. Yep, we named a wine after a fish. I really thought we would name a wine after me when I joined the family business, but alas, the fish came first. Um, so yeah, Miss Lucy is the local nickname for the red stump nose, which is actually critically endangered. It's a fish that is as delicious as it is ugly, according to Wikipedia, and reminds a lot of people of crayfish or lobster. It has a very shellfishy taste. Um, so often called the poor man's crayfish in that if you mix it with mayonnaise, you'll never know that it, that it wasn't crayfish. Um, <laughs> yeah, and as a result, has been caught quite feverishly um, over the years, so is now critically endangered. So we've made this wine as a tribute to the good old days, to you know, the exploitation of the ocean, as a reminder of of what we should protect. And we've also made it as our perfect wine to go with seafood because we eat fish for lunch every single day. And we always used to have Sauvignon Blanc with our lunches, but then we decided we needed to make a wine to go with seafood. What's What's the point of having a farm if you can't make a wine to go with what you eat? So the idea for Miss Lucy began like that. It took us 12 years from planting the first vines for this blend. Four years of playing with the blend just to, you know, figure out exactly how we wanted it until we finally released it. So it took eight years to mature, four years of blending. Finally released the first vintage in 2014. This is the 2019 vintage and it is 40% Pinot Gris. 32% Sauvignon Blanc and 28% Semillon. So quite an interesting blend. I don't think um, there is another one like it. It's quite unique. And for us, it is the perfect wine to go with seafood. Um, we have done extensive recipe testing. There's been many a boozy lunch. So I know I suggested anything fishy as your food pairing. And I stand by the fact that pretty much anything from the ocean will go with this if you've decided to go the <laughs> store cupboard route of tinned mussels or tinned oysters then that oiliness will really work with the the oiliness of the semillon if it's something really fresh like um, just a piece of sashimi smoked salmon something a little bit you know less adulterated the sauvignon blanc's freshness and citrus citrusy flavors will really come through and then also the pinot gris is quite spicy so it works really well with peri peri prawns, like, you know, more Asian flavors, salt and pepper squid. If you're going for like full on crab curry, something like that, that will work really well as well. Um, it's really diverse, it's just depending on what you pair it with. So if you have the time and you can try it with a few different seafood dishes, it's quite interesting to see how the different elements come up um, in the wine as well. It's one of those that's quite quaffable, so you could easily get through quite a few bottles over lunch but it's also quite a nerdy wine so if you want to leave it in your glass think about it come back to it it will develop it will change and it's just a really super interesting beautiful wine so definitely that grapefruit that comes through um, the pink grapefruit pumple mousse uh, you get a bit of the more passion fruity side of the Sauvignon Blanc like a citrusy element that comes through there as well and then a very beautiful spiciness from the Pinot Gris. Uh, 
and that semillon really comes through on the palate it's like almost a lemon verbena lemon leaf quality that really coats the palate it gives it a nice fullness and is just such an awesome wine to have with with any bounty from the ocean So our last wine for this tasting is the Holberry Cabernet Sauvignon. So Holberry is 100% cab. Um, that is of the two that we make the younger, fresher style. And it's quite interesting actually because no one on our farm is a winemaker. Um, I studied philosophy so I could talk about wine. My aunt is actually a qualified dentist. My dad went to the army after school and yeah that was his education um and our assistant winemaker is actually a fitter and turner so really great at fixing things but yeah so no one's a qualified winemaker um on springfield we do everything according to intuition according to trial and error and just using our common sense which i think is seriously underrated or yeah underrated nowadays and underutilized um we decided that we don't really like harsh or bitter tannins in wine so or in our red wines and um, the first thing you learn if you open any book about about wine is that the tannins in red wine come from the skins they come from the seeds and they come from the stems so as we harvest as i explained earlier with machines they are already destemmed when they come into the into the cellar um, we actually don't even have a destemmer in the cellar at all if something needs to be destemmed if it had to be picked by hand um, yeah it has to be like manually destemmed so it's already destemmed when it comes into the cellar then we decide to not extract the bitter harsh tannins by not pressing or crushing the grapes at all so whole berries completely unpressed uncrushed as a result we use whole berries hence the name and our whole red wine cellar is designed on a gravity flow system so the grapes come into the cellar um, on a conveyor belt where they are transported up onto the second story this needs wine um, transported up onto the second story and then straight into the tanks completely whole where the weight of the grapes on top of each other will slowly but surely squeeze out the juice for us so at no point are we crushing the grapes, at no point are we pressing the grapes, we are only using gravity and time to squeeze out the juice out of the grapes itself. We cold macerate for a couple of days, so cool the tank down to about 10 degrees Celsius to prevent any fermentation and just allow that juice to slowly seep out for the skins to break down during that time. And then after that we turn off the cooling temperature naturally starts to rise and the natural yeast that grows in the skins of the grapes actually ferments the juice into wine for us so we don't add anything we don't do anything we have a completely hands-off approach when it comes to our red wines so it's naturally fermented it's bottled unfiltered 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 unfined um, yeah we really do as little as possible and as a result we really are able to express the terroir express express the true flavors of the grapes and not mask everything behind really bitter harsh tannins um, once the juice is finished fermenting we rack it off into French oak barrels where we leave it for one year we rack every three months so every three months we'll siphon off the top 98 percent of the wine and all the sediment and bits left at the bottom will be washed out and then the wine will be refilled into the barrel. So that means when we come to bottling, we've already removed, constantly been skimming off that sediment. So we don't have to filter the wine or find the wine at all. So it's a real true expression of the Cabernet that we have growing on the farm. And it's um, deceptively easy to drink. So it has a smoky hint to it which is why I suggested to have it with charcuterie such as brizola, um, biltong if you can get your hands on it is a really good suggestion and it's it's something that's just um, yeah 
super diverse i tend to it's my winter drink of choice so i, I tend to accidentally finish a bottle um, every night <laughs> but uh, you definitely get that that beautiful primary fruit that comes through so fresh plums cherries dark red fruit um, yeah some black currant that comes through as well and then because of that like long slow fermentation process you you get the the smokiness and the spiciness that comes through as well but because we didn't press the grapes at all at any point in in the winemaking process there's no bitter harsh tannin it doesn't dry out your mouth it's still super juicy that natural acidity can really come through and it's just so plush and drinkable and i, I mean you've got it in front of you you'll you'll know what i'm talking about taking that bottle home with me tonight um thank you all this is our three springfield wines thank you for joining and if there's any questions please don't hesitate to send them our way um you can also follow us along on all our social media channels just search springfield estate to see what we're doing during lockdown it's been a wild ride here in south africa all tobacco and alcohol sales have been banned i might have said this before but um yeah it's been it's been quite interesting and quite challenging so we are so happy that we have technology and that we are able to to share our wines with you all the way over in the uk thank you for joining